are they, spaceships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at toy, drug, and department stores. Good morning, PUL fans. Charlie Lowe here. Joining me in the booth today, Kristen K.K. Kawek. And we are excited for a last game of the season at Peace of Action. Indianapolis Red taking on the Columbus Pride here at home. K.K., what an exciting time to have you here in the booth with us. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to be able to be up here with you, watch the game, commentate. So thanks for having me. Of course. For those of you who don't know, KK is sort of a legend around the Indianapolis area mm. here. Spent time <laughs> playing with Rogue, has played with the Red. Also flitted over to play with Steamboat for a couple of years. One of the most important members of our Indianapolis community. Thanks, Charlie. And it's a joy to have a beautiful day here. Slight throwers, breeze, to have the Columbus Pride here taking on our Indy Red Columbus Pride. No wins on the season yet. Looking for that first win. A couple studs on this team. Kat McGuire, Champ Pruitt, Rachel Mast, players who have big game experience both in the PUL and through the club in college series. What do you, you know, what do we know about this team? What are we expecting to see from them? Well, I know with those players in particular, Cat likes to go deep. <laughs> I think we're going to see Cat touching the disc quite a lot um, in the handler space and in the cutting space. So that's a person to keep an eye on today. 100%. One of the biggest drivers has put up huge numbers against a lot of the best teams in the league all year. You know, and for our Indian Red, any number of all-stars that we could talk about, one I really want to highlight, though, Eliza Hutchings more than doubled any other red players total goal output on this season i think she's sitting at around 16 or 17 goals closest player to her is at eight wow that's amazing yeah eliza eliza's energy brings the team up another notch um eliza has this ability to just grind it out point after point and you can rely on eliza so Eliza coming to us from the St. Louis area, joined by teammates Melissa Gibbs and Claire Skittles Milton, kind of making up that trio of St. Louis powerhouses. Got a chance to talk to uh, Dustin, one of the head coaches of the Columbus Pride. Asked him, who are you looking to slow down today on the red? And he just kind of looked at me and deadpan. They play for his by committee. There's not really slowing any one person down. We have to play de team defense, 20 up, 20 down, and really hope that we can just win individual matchups when they come our way. Yeah. So one thing about Red is that they do a really good job at providing everyone pretty equal playing time, so not everyone gets super tired, and you can rely on each player to be energized next time they come in. 100%. On this red team, important to note today, we're not going to have the presence of Mary Timmons, one of our uh, strong members of that cutting core, 
Uh, instead, today we are getting the services of. Oh, you know what? Jackie told me and I can't remember. Mm. What a horrible, horrible day. Anyway, Mary, we love you. Hope you're having a fantastic time. Uh, it's Annie Mylink. Mm -hmm. Annie Mylink out here today. Came in from Europe. Oh, my Recently gosh. got back from Europe. This is That's Frisbee for you. People are flying in from all over the place to join to play Frisbee. People don't get this, right? People are traveling. People are flying. And they're doing their best to come into this game healthy. So excited to have Annie Mylink out here today. Again, getting started, Indianapolis Red taking on the Columbus Pride. We're going to take a moment to highlight some of our sponsors. This presentation of the PUL and the Indianapolis Red brought to you by Somerset Paving. Somerset Paving is Detroit's expert in asphalt and concrete paving. Somerset Paving, take the right way to quality. We'd also like to thank MDMI, one of our local sponsors. Materials Data Management has the experience and drive necessary to help your organization deploy the best in engineering materials information management solutions. Check us out on LinkedIn for current job openings and our website, materialsdatamanagement.com for a list of our services and software. Data, importers, exporters, and consulting too. MDMI is here for you. Good stuff. Um, we're also sponsored by Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND Sports Team Photographer, and Indy Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter if you need sports or fashion, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online, everyonesjoyphotography.com. And once again, thank you to Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate sponsoring this broadcast Spin Ultimate is one of the leaders, if not the definitive leader in Ultimate Frisbee apparel, uniforms, and team gear. You want to look your best. You want to look fantastic on and off the field. You want to have that shared sense of team unity. Spin Ultimate is the place to go. SpinUltimate.com. And we're a sponsor by Breakmark. Breakmark is the official apparel sponsor of Indie Red. Go to the Breakmark.com for services and gear and more. So let's talk a little bit about what this game means to us, KK. Indianapolis Red started the season down 0-2. Tough losses to the Minnesota Strike and to the DC Shadow. A couple of the preeminent teams. DC Shadow, by the way, picking up Cami Groom for the remainder of the no season. No big deal. Yeah, casual, <laughs> casual. It's like signing LeBron James <laughs> two days before the finals. Maybe not this year, but mm -hmm. generally. Um, anyway, Indy Red did everything that we were supposed to do then. We started winning out the season and winning big. We're back in the positive column as far as point differential goes. You know, really, really, really pushing to finish the season strong. We needed a little bit of help across the division, and unfortunately we did not quite get it. Milwaukee Monarchs, Minnesota Strike having a game recently over at Breeze Stevens Field. Minnesota Strike getting the win there by about six. Unfortunately, you know, barring a huge win here, perhaps a couple other collapses across the league, likely means that we're not getting into the playoffs barring an outside chance at the wild card. Right. Well, I know that the players on Indy Red, the leadership, the culture, doesn't really care about the win loss. They are gonna show up to every single game doing their very best and they're going to grind it out no matter what so this game is going to be no different and they're going to be ready to go 100 percent. it's a good opportunity to build some good end of season momentum continue sharpening up that chemistry seeing what players are thinking feeling doing capable of you know big opportunity for a lot of these players to go and have huge games today all of which we can use to carry towards a you know great season next year you know we're not gonna not cross our fingers for that opportunity <laughs> to maybe sneak into the wild card but regardless been a really successful season so far excited to cap this off today hopefully with a huge win over the columbus pride mm -hmm. agreed columbus pride still looking for that first win of the season they are looking to really push the tempo today um coaching staff you know let on that they think that they've got the athletes to go and win competent win games downfield to air it out deep chain a lot of throws together if necessary as soon as they can get that momentum going in their favor it is all track beat all day yeah so for pride in particular i i feel like you know they're probably playing with the mindset of we have nothing to lose we're gonna put it all on the field today 
um, everything that we have, everything that we've learned, all of this chemistry that we're having, we're just going to come out, have a good time, and play extremely hard and really capitalize and get a win probably. Yeah. Last weekend had an opportunity to go call some games at college nationals and got, uh, got in front of the big boss himself, Charlie Eisenhood and Keith Rayner. A, fantastic guys. The work that they do with Ulti World is phenomenal. Uh, go become a subscriber if you're not one. However, I did challenge them on one important thing. Earlier this year in a Deep Look episode, they referred to the Red as the Detroit mechanics of the PUL. Right. <laughs> Perhaps the most outrageous claim that has ever been made about a singular PUL team. Well, we know Ultimate Frisbee people love to make hot takes when they don't really have the knowledge to make those hot takes, and that is clearly just an unknowledgeable hot take. <laughs> 100%. So when I got a chance to ask them about it, they said, well, uh, very obviously we were wrong. Yeah. Incredible way to turn the season around there. Hopefully it's not too little too late. But, you know, there are uh, other teams certainly fighting for that mechanics of the PUL title. The real thing that, you know, we should probably focus on, though, we don't need to compare across <laughs> leagues. All of the players in this league are hyper competitive. They're out here to do their own thing, play their own game. The Pride, the Red, Monarchs, whomever. They're all just great teams out here yeah, looking to play the highest level Frisbee they can. And they're not just seeking wins. They're also seeking um, something deeper than that. You know, culture, um, energy, vibes. Um, they're showing up in the community. So they're doing more than playing competitive ultimate. This is also a sport that puts a lot of mental and emotional energy in, in things like that. So, yeah. Well... As we get ready to go, our officials getting ready to show the start of the game down there in bright green shirts, as you will see them on your screen. Indianapolis Red set to start on defense. Haley Bannis, Alex Hu, Anastasia Foster, Linnea Frazier, Emily Wyckoff, Risa Umeno, and Bree Burris out there. The pull is up, and we are underway here. Columbus Pride starting with the disc. Looks like we're coming out in a person defense. Nice matchup defense to start for the red. Really, really pressuring those cutters. Not a lot there for the Pride so far. Stall count rising. Tough throw, but secured by Maggie Roll in the middle of the field. Fraser on the mark. Long arms, quick feet, really able to get pressure. Disc is aired out. Foster in the area. Wyckoff in the area, but does not matter. Disc is secured. In the goal, Columbus Pride on the board already. Delaney Marcelek, first goal of the day. Did look like that disc popped up a little bit, so I wonder if that wind is coming Pride from the right of your screen to the left of your screen. And as we see that disc go up here, Wyckoff does a great job of closing, but... Marcelek elevates strong with that right hand, makes sure that their feet are in bounds, and that's an easy first goal for the Pride. No problem for the Red. That's a D point. Offense, it is no secret, and Ultimate has the advantage. You know, here we go. Let's get a nice steady O point out of our Indy Red, but that's a little bit of what we, you know, the coaching staff for the Pride told us we'd see once they got going, it was just boom, 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 all the way into the end zone. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you expect to see from this Indy Red offense, KK. Well, from what I know about this offensive line is I think this offensive line could also be a D line. <laughs> um, they have the athleticism and the legs, so um, they're going to be making lots of really strong in cuts and spreading the field deep with some deep um, cuts. We have Gibbs going deep right now. Katie Dyer has a huge flick huck and is always looking for that big flick huck to the end zone. As he gives Eric out too far for her St. Louis partner, Eliza Hutchings. We'll see that St. Louis connection emerge over the course of the game. And as you said, we'll get a chance to see the defensive chops of this Indy Red O-line. Looks like they're coming out in a zone. Indy Red have liked their zone this year. Some strong throwers, though on this D-line for the Pride. We'll see how the Red adapt. Katie Dyer-Cox chasing 
the disc around in that backfield. Oh, gets the foot, foot block. block. Let's go, Katie. Dyer That's is one exactly of the what most, they wanted. Oh, 100%. Dyer is one of the most ferocious defenders that, uh, on this red team. Seeing yeah. her on the O-line almost feels like a waste of defensive talent, but <laughs> gets the foot block. Huge throw up. Plenty of time for Gibbs. Watches her toes. That's a goal. Indy Red on the board. 1-1. One, one. Tied with the Columbus Pride. And had just, as we hear a Vuvuzela ring out from the crowd, <laughs> that is the kind of a veteran, you know, know-how. That body control from Gibbs make, had plenty of time as we see the Max disc go up. Gibbs. Make sure that her feet are nice and inbound. Easy to reel in, gets her body in the way. Defender has no play on it. What else do we expect from Gibbs at this point? Gibbs is extremely agile, and the the amount of knowledge that Gibbs brings to this sport is incredible. I know that she's not only showing up to play, but she's also coaching her teammates along the way and making sure they match her level of intensity and knowledge and um, has an incredible field awareness. One of the best parts of Gibbs on this Indy Red team is that she really doesn't care how she gets it done. Whatever she can do to make the team better, she's going to do. Mm -hmm. If that's filling up the stat sheet on day one, great. If that's throwing assists on day two, that's fine. If it's just playing lockdown defense, no stats, doesn't matter. As long as she's contributed, she'll have, you know, rest her head easy. As we get the action restarted, Pride looking to attack on offense. More of this zone from Indy Red. Alex, who at the center point of that zone in the backfield, Sydney Olin, Anastasia Foster doing a great job of clogging the lanes in the middle there. Risa Umeno picking up players left and right on the wings. Oh. There it is. Layout block. Risa Umeno. That's classic Risa. What? Always there to look for that layout D. Won a game, two a game maybe. Yeah. It doesn't matter. She uh, loves to fly high. Mm -hmm. Again. Umeno down there on the sideline looking for a reset. Great reset cut by Sydney Olin. Oh, she's got her, teeth, her feet tied up there. Yeah, where wine trips a little bit. Disc back in the hands of the pride. Red going to go out and look for another block, another th turnover. We'll see if we can get some D-line offense restarted. Annie Mylink is really active on that mark there. Mylink chasing back and forth. As you said, active mark, full jumping jacks at this point, doing everything she can. And there's the turnover into Umeno's hands. Disc is aired out. And there it is, another goal for the Indianapolis Red. That's a break, 2-1 to Indy. To Bree Burris. And so Bree's looking to be really active on those swings. So that's the one of the main components of this zone is Brie has the ability to be really active and kind of break away from the mold and get a D when she can. And the disc just not brought in by the pride, falls comfortably into Umeno's hands. Easy, aired out OI backhand for the goal to Burris. 2-1, Indianapolis Red up early over the Columbus pride. That's the break that we were looking for. Let's get the advantage going and going early. So now, Pride, only down one. Just need to steady the ship. Looks like we're getting a little bit of crossover. I see uh, Champ Pruitt out there, Cat McGuire out there, Rachel Mast, a number one, another one of the mainstays on the O-line for the Pride. Definitely a, hey, let's not get this, let this game get out of hand kind of line. Let's uh, keep it even. We'll get that break back later in the game, you know. And what do you think? What do you think the coaches are uh, working through right now? I think it's a game of streaks. It's early on in the game. You can't let these um, early breaks take you take your mental and emotional energy down. You have to stay up and just know that your time is coming. Disc advancing nicely for the pride. Marcelek back finds Phillips. Has McGuire piercing through that zone, but does not take the opportunity. Mast swings the disc over to Perry. Back to McGuire, airing it out. 
Redder in the area. That's a great D by Werewine. Way to close. Way to have excellent body control. Doesn't foul. Just gets a lot of pressure on the defender. Just a little bit higher. Oh. Could have actually gotten for that second grab, but was a little discombobulated after. Looks like there might have been a foul or strip called. No contest. So that's a goal. Strip is called, upheld, no contest. Haley Bannis doing her job trying to pressure that throw. A little too Columbus much contact, Columbus though. Columbus and that's a hold for the Columbus Pride, to all currently. And, and even though this is a non-contact sport, there will be inevitable contact, which is why we have you know self-officiating happening on the field. So there's com conversation happening on the field and those hand signals for for communication to us and everyone watching. And we saw on that replay, Pride player does in fact grab the disc. Banis on her follow through as she run, continues her run does just gently pull the disc out of the hands and the strip call goes through. Mm -hmm. So most importantly, you want to stop rotation. That's, that's a clean hold when you stop rotation. So after stopping rotation, if you hit the disc out of the hands and that would be a foul. We'll get a look at our Indy Red offense again. Katie Dyer Cox out there. Anna McClurkin receiving in the middle of the field. To Tracy Lowe. Nice to have T. Lowe back for the last game of the season. T. Lowe has a huge huck ability and wow, nice grab by, is that Maya? Maya Hernandez, layout grab attempt, calls the injury, going to be replaced by Skittles Milton. Disc staying in the hands of the Red, though. What an incredible effort to hold on to the disc from Maya Hernandez. Eliza Hutchings now with the disc on that far sideline. Disc is too high. Indy Red need to calm these throws down. Repeated misses are going to start to spell trouble over the rest of this game. Pride are going to have an opportunity to get their break back. Cat McGuire picking up. Good inside throw. Mal Griffith, one of the fastest players, but Disc is just a little bit too high and far for two Pride players. Another opportunity for the Red. Tilo, Tracy Lowe, set to pick the Disc back up. Re-engage action for the Indianapolis Red. And some of these players play with each other on a hybrid. Um, so Tilo plays hybrid, Cap plays hybrid. So they kind of know what each other wants. Um, so this type of knowledge can really help out when defending a player. Claire Skittles Milton airs it out. Katie Dyer Cox patient as ever in the end zone. Defender falls. Dyer goes up, snags the disc. And that's 3-2 to the Indianapolis Red over the Columbus Pride. Excellent toes from Skittles Milton there, airs the disc out. And despite fierce competition from Champ Pruitt, a, the turf monster comes up and grabs her. Katie Dyer Cox is able to work Another through shout that. Out from the booth to Annie Miley from your Midland fans. Go number seven. A little bit of a scare there, but. Excellent hold opportunity from the Indy Red. And uh, another chance to go out and get a break, see if we can push this lead to two and beyond. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of wind happening right now, but I know that it's a little gusty, so it's unpredictable um, when the wind is going to come and pop the disc up. A thrower's breeze really plays to the advantage of some of these big red throwers like Skittles and like Tilo. It'd be really nice to see them air the disc out and early and often. Quickly pushing the pace, Columbus Pride. Seeing what they can get going. Disc is aired out. I think number seven there was really just trying to stop momentum to be safe. Yeah, good safe play from the Pride there. Maggie Rowell finds a player in the end zone. Looks like number 22, Mary Turner. Pride even it back up at three. 
and the Red are going to need to really get some defensive pressure on. Excellent run by Rowell. Yeah. Seven was sliding in to try to make the save. Well reasoned out. Rowell finds Mary Turner in the end zone. That's number 22 for your pride if you are rooting for the Columbus side today. Even, three to three. Indianapolis Red back out on offense. Love to see a good game. Red have not played what really feels like a competitive, tight game in the last three games of the season. Yeah, really winning opened by a up lot big leads. or losing, kind of. <laughs> it happens. It will be phenomenal to see how the Red handle a tight contest. Still tied up at three here early in the first quarter. Red receiving. Disc sails out of bounds, though. Going to give the Red the disc in the center of the field. Nice grab by the observer. John Keel, <laughs> former head coach of Brebuff Jesuit High School's ultimate team. Lauren Kitten, one of his own players there, centering the disc in the middle of the field. Kristen Dudley in the backfield with her, along with Mackenzie Matamore. This looks like a pull play to me. <laughs> disc is aired out. Milton in the area. That's Excellent right. close by number 12, Morgan Johnson. But Skittles just phenomenal read. High release to Hutchings. Easy offense. You had Gibbs going uh, four side. Um, I think it was Maya going break side and Skittles Milton going deep. And that is, that's a pull play for you. They drew that up. An incredible throw from Lauren Kitten. That play works because of the cannon that she has. And then it's just nice, easy high release flip to Hutchings. Milton and Hutchings, one of the Reds' favorite connections this year, sort of a classic connection of their own. Eliza Red are back Hutchings on top, four to three. And that's what we're looking for, easy offense, getting our pull plays going, not giving the pride defense a chance to set up to impact those pull plays. You know, honestly, sort of a situation where the pull going out of bounds really gave us an opportunity. Pulling is such a huge instrumental piece of team success mm -hmm. um definitely underrated skill to have is pulling yep keeping it in balance is super critical to make sure that you can get your defense set up um and that you can start 100 percent once the offense picks up the disc sydney olin absolutely gargantuan pull red down and set up and there's that zone alex who at the front of the spear burris Mylink in the backfield with her, trying to really force some huge swings and hopefully some easy turnovers for the Red. There's Graham Cunningham, disc almost that too was far for the prize. by Sydney and then caught again by number four. Wearwine secures the block for the Red. Umeno in the middle of the field. Red getting the action started, going the other way, looking for that all-important break oh. opportunity. Oh, number four with that poach D. Um, good safe play there. I don't like that lane poach mm -mm. very often. It is one of the biggest ways in which players get hurt in this game. Yes, and it's so tempting, though. Um, depending on what kind of handler defensive play you're looking for, a lot of teams will poach. I know Indy Red really likes to stay really tight on those handler handlers. Yeah. There's Oland on the near sideline. Stoppage downfield. Pick called. Looks like Wearwine lost track of her mark, makes up a little bit of the yardage. And you know a pick was called because you saw the hands going up, making like a goalpost arms. Excellent fake there from Umeno. Rowell really was hunting for the block there. Wearwine fakes it off. Power position for Oland, but no one streaking downfield. Nice upline cut from Umeno, but chooses instead to swing over to Hu. Disc is too far for Foster. Excellent team defense from the Pride. And they are attacking the other direction, still trying to secure this hold. And Sydney picked up on the handler and let their person go deep. So we have some switching happening in defense here on the field. Rachel Mast going every other for the Columbus Pride right now. Cunningham with the disc in her hands, 10 yards outside the end zone. Incredible inside break. Disc ruled not inbounds. 
Tight mark put on by Umeno, trying to get this goal line stand for the Indianapolis Red. Myling shadowing, cutting him across the field. There's the shot, safely into the hands of the Pride. Incredible look. That is a hard, that's a hard look to find. You have to look beyond all of the players that are in the middle of the field to find someone open to hit that flick open side. Columbus Pride ties it up at four piece. So we see Phillips' disc in her hands. Stall count rises. High stall cross field shot goes up and into the hands of Rachel Mast. Offensive mainstay, shift steadier for this pride offense. If they're going to get it done, she is going to be a huge piece of the puzzle. And our red have to be kicking themselves that we couldn't put that break opportunity in. Yeah, you know, you put your defense out there and you try to get the D and maybe I think Red's defense wants to score pretty quick. You know, we're looking for fast breaks and fast turnaround times and that can also lead to a little bit, some more mistakes sometimes. Duds fields it up to Tilo. Red offense getting it started. Tilo pestered by Emily Evans on the mark. Disc is aired out. And despite a phenomenal effort getting herself into position, Schloniger cannot make the grab. Pride with a huge break opportunity here. And Disc is just thrown too far for H.G. Morrison. Not sure what happened there, but they do not secure the catch. And then a tight lane gives the Disc right back to the Pride. That was a great poach D from number 21. That is Mal Griffith. Mal Griffith is just an incredible grinder on this Pride D-line. One of the fastest players playing in this particular game right now and maybe in the PUL in general. Morrison, big effort to secure the grab there. Morrison, a huge part of a resurgent Fever team. Not quite back to national prominence yet, but Fever finished the season positive in the win column. Uh, huge credit to the skills that they brought to that particular collegiate squad. Maya Hernandez in the backfield on defense for the Red. Nice to see that she's back out after the injury call. Looks like Maya was poaching in the in the lane, so there wasn't much to look for in the in cuts, so they had to put it deep. Griffith was in the area of that deep throw, not able to sell out and make the grab there. Disc back with Tilo. Finds hybrid teammate Maya Hernandez there on the far sideline. No inside lane, but pushes ahead to McClurkin. The fakes from Maya opening up that inside lane. And there it is, disc well read and run out by mm -hmm. Melissa Gibbs. Cross field throw there. Really opens up the four side. Katie Dyer in the middle now. Looking a little impatiently, but finds Hernandez on the near sideline. 30 seconds remaining in this first quarter. And Maya's ready to grind. And the Red don't need to do anything except maintain possession. McClurkin catches it twice. There we are. Sometimes Indianapolis you just got to back it to yourself for extra sauce, you know? It's not cheating unless you get caught. 5-4, <laughs> Indianapolis Red over the Columbus Pride. McClurkin stays focused, keeps with the disc. And the Pride get and the Pride down 4-5. Around 20 seconds the left to answer Miami this Indy Red squad. That makes it Indianapolis Red 5, Columbus Pride 4. So at the end of the first quarter, looking at about 20 seconds left, we have to remember that all you have to do is be the team in possession of the disc when the clock strikes zero. If the clock goes to zero, disc still in your hand, you have the opportunity to play out the possession. If you score, fantastic. You get another point going into the next quarter. If it's a turnover though, quarter ends, and we go to the break. Yeah, I think most teams, um, I don't know if there's a whole lot of strategy right now about playing with possession. I think they're just trying to play really solid offense and <laughs> not get deed and not um, drop the disc. So they're just looking to work it up easily, just like any other normal day. Pride offense getting going. Cunningham. going every other as she has so often through this game. Little little breezy. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. Pride 
plenty Three. of distance to go between them and a goal, and all they need to do is play possession offense. Yeah, Indy Red's hunting for a D right now. Breeze looking really sharp on that inside. There it is. Fire call echoing from the red sideline, breaking out of that zone. Disc ruled inbounds by the observer. And despite a massive layout block attempt from Werewine, the Pride secure the goal, tying it back up at fives. Incredible effort. Werewine inches from getting that block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we see Roll advance the disc to Phillips and shoots it into the lane there. What an incredible grab. Spike tied up at fives. Columbus Pride, Indianapolis Red. We will be right back with more PUL action. Are they spaceships from Mars? No, they're Frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at Toy Drug and Department Stores. Back here in Indianapolis, Premier Ultimate League action going on. Midwest Division, Columbus Pride and Indianapolis Red tied up at fives. And we'd like to remind you that this live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Going on two decades. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. Get your team decked out in the best, looking your best, playing your best. Spin Ultimate. All right, tied up at fives here. Indy Red set to receive on offense. Pride getting it going. Pull into the middle of the field. Tilo on the disc. Looks like we have a horizontal offense for the Indy Red. First cut by Skittles Milton. And wind has picked up. These discs are starting to sail higher and higher. We'll need to see the athletes calibrate those throws, keep them a little bit lower. Several turnovers already on the day for both teams. Discs just going too high and not far enough. Cat McGuire centering the disc. Great defense by McKenna Matamore. McKenna Matamore not one to shy away. And that's kind of a collegiate rivalry too. Matamore and McGuire used to duel at Michigan and Michigan State. So another opportunity for them to clash on field. Go green. I'm not going to say it. 
Tilo picks up. Finds fellow lefty Lauren Kitten. Incredible bid and disc just a little bit too low for a bidding Hutchings. Short field for the pride. McGuire picks up, looking to put it into the end zone and secure an early break, and that may be it. Oh, disc just too far for Champ. Not able to reel it in for the pride. That was really almost perfectly placed just so pride could get their hands on it. I think the wind probably let it sail a little too far. You said it yourself earlier. It's gusting out there. And Skittles just lost that one in translation, was looking left, looked back right, right as Tilo released it and needed to turn around and accelerate. McGuire on the disc, shadowed by Matamore. Pride advancing comfortably up that close sideline, masked with the disc in her hands. No around throw opportunity, almost run through by Matamore. Pick called. This is a really fun matchup with Kat, Kat and Maketa. Instead of Cat Mac, it's Cat Mac. <laughs> Beautiful swing from McGuire. Finds Pruitt in the middle of the field, back to McGuire, playing a little two-person ball right now. Pride looks like to be in their end zone set. And a timeout called. Reminder that in the Premier Ultimate League, timeouts provide an opportunity for teams not just to talk about their strategy, but to switch in entire lines of players. Pride may be looking with a high stall count to get an offensive line in and really convert this break opportunity. Red will have an opportunity to counter with their own defensive line, see if they can really secure a needed hold here. Two timeouts per team per half. Wind really picking up here forcing these throwers to change the angle of attack with a lot of these discs. And there it is, Red trotting out a D-line, Anastasia Foster, Emily Wyckoff, Linnea Frazier, Alex Hu, Brianna Burris, Haley Bannis, Risa Umano, they know how important it is that they get a goal line stand here. Emily Wyckoff on the initiation cutter, one of the most athletic players on this red side. Really trying to ensure that nothing crafty goes off for McGuire. And there it is in the middle of the field. Break secured for the Columbus Pride. That's number 22, Mary Turner. And we've seen Kat make that break side flick to the middle of the field several Columbus times today. Takes the, lead. the score is now five to six. She's just an incredibly patient player with the disc in her hands. Doesn't have the up line adjusts low inside break, perfectly placed to the bread basket of Turner, a little hop to make sure her feet stay in bounds. And that is a break. Columbus Pride back up 6-5. We are back on serve in this game and the red will need another hold and a break to regain their advantage. Pride giving the red everything that they do not want in this game so far. We knew this game was going to be a grind. We hoped that it would be a blowout. And yet here we are, down one. Offense set to receive. Katie Dyer-Cox out there. Anna McClurgan, Kristen Dudley. Matchup defense works. Number seven, Delaney Marsalek runs through Katie Dyer-Cox. Milton giving chase to Champ Pruitt. Red really need to get this disc back here, searching for a block to ensure the pride do not go up two. Good patience stays with Pruitt. There Great. it is. Run through D from Keta Matamor. Catch block, gets the offense restarted immediately. Hernandez in the middle of the field. All alone, not even a mark to be found. Disc is just a little bit behind. Skittles Milton, though, turnover. 
Pruitt gets a little piece of it as she runs through. Seems as though Pride has really amped up their defense. They've, def they've come out in an entirely different gear here in the last couple points. Because those aren't mistakes by Red. Those are blocks. Milton not looking for the disc at all. Rocketed through. And there it is. Kat McGuire brings in the goal. Columbus Pride, seven. Indianapolis Red, five. And the Red need to do something if they're going to stop this Pride team from marching. Columbus Pride scores. The score is now. Incredibly Columbus silky throw through the middle there. Tough defense from Katie Dyer Cox, but does not matter. Not able to get the block. We Disc is flipped to McGuire for an easy goal. Yeah, so I think Red is has gotten a little comfortable. They've gotten into a rhythm, and Pride is looking to really amp up their defense, and Red is going to have to adjust. They're going to need to adjust, and they're going to need to adjust soon. We see Coach Vanderbush and Coach Pukish out there talking to this line, hoping that we're getting some conversation about, hey, all that we need to do is play easy possession ball here. We know that the wind is now going to play a factor through the rest of this game. All that we need to do is make easy throws, easy catches, cut hard. They've got a lot of athletes on this pride side, so none of these discs are going to come easy anymore. Olin picks up. Excellent pressure there from the pride, but disc into the hands of who? Finds Werewine. Pick called. Looks like a little bit of a different offense for Indy Red. And we're seeing a bracket set downfield from the Columbus Pride. Mal Griffith sitting downfield, making sure that nothing goes off deep. And in the uh, underspace, Charlie Andreessen there, making sure that nothing comes out easy. No free lanes for this Red team. Sydney Olin and Risa Omena are looking to play small ball together. That looked like a little bit of a miscommunication. Mistake from the red side gives the Pride another break opportunity. Griffith picks up, pestered by Burris on the mark. Burris gets a piece of it. Yes. Disc she back did. to her. Werewine at the bottom of the screen. Rockets the disc out. Hangs up a little bit though. Foster's gonna need to do some, need some heroics. Does not complete them. Griffith, block. Going back the other way. Morrison lets it fly. No one down there. Sydney Olin restarting this red offense. And we will need to clean it up. Indy Red looking to work into the middle of the field. One of the ways in which this wind is playing a factor is we're seeing a little bit more sideline trapping now from the Columbus Pride. Happy to let swings go off towards the sideline where they can really, really clamp down. There's a hand block, H.G. Morrison stuffs Alex Hu. And a timeout. Timeout taken. Looking to get their offense set in there for Pride to punch this in. Timeout taken, Columbus Pride. Their second timeout of the half taken. They are really looking to put the cleats down and go up three here, halfway through this second quarter of action. What do the red need here, KK? I would be interesting to see if they do a little bit of a, um, a bracket or a junkie set, or if they're just gonna go full person. It looks like they are just going to match up and trust their, trust their matchup here. Interesting shift by the Indianapolis Red. An O-line out there. Lauren Kitten, Kristen Dudley, Tracy Lowe all in the backfield. A lot of confidence from the Indianapolis Red that this O-line can go out and secure a block. 
and then convert going the other direction. It looks like they had a set play call for number 46, but Gibbs with a great defense there. And that's the spark that the Red may need. Incredible block, Melissa Gibbs runs through on Graham Cunningham. Tracy Lowe getting the action started. Milton in the middle of the field now. And the Pride are doing a phenomenal job of stopping the deep game. Rising stall count results in a put. Milton skies two. That was a fantastic read by Skittles Milton. Oh. And that disc just straight through the lane for Graham Cunningham getting the block back. Little too floaty there. But a mistake finally. The Pride give it back. Kitten has the disc in her hands. Waiting for cuts to unfold here. Phenomenal backfield defense, and there it is. Crazy low through two, but a stall signaled on the field from the Pride. Contested, as demonstrated by the Lauren Kitten's mark there. Contested stall will go back to Kitten. And she'll only have a couple seconds to get this disc off. Red will need an early cut. And a timeout called. It was a little crowded there in the end zone, so that was a great call by Blake Vanderbush, head coach. Gives them an opportunity to restructure the field and ensure that they get a quick look off in a tight stall situation. We'll see if they leave the same line out there or if they make any substitutions on this point. It does appear that they're keeping the same line out there. So this will be, as we said, this is the Indianapolis O-line. Yeah, well, it's really interesting because the I think Indy Red plays a lot with trust in their players. And they have a couple set lines, and those set lines either play O or D. This line in particular, I think, came out on O. Um, all lines are capable of, of doing both. Dudley takes over on the disc for the red, waiting for the pride to finish their conversation. Kristen Dudley is one of the founding members of this team and one of the most legendary figures in the Indianapolis community. Yeah, Kristen Dudley's been around for a long time, playing for Parcha this year, played for Parcha last year, playing for Parcha this year, and has grown as an athlete. And you can always trust in Kristen's speed and throws. Hutchings at the front of the stack. Can't say there's much of a better decision here of somebody to get the offense initiated. We know that the throw is going to come off quickly. We'll see how she opens herself up. There it is. Melissa Gibbs all alone at the back of the end zone. Kristen Dudley rockets a flick to the back. That's a goal. Indianapolis Red stop the bleeding. Down one, 6-7 to the Columbus Pride. That was really interesting. They had their set uh, end zone coming from the front of the stack, and then all of a sudden everyone split from the front, and there was just a wide open lane in the middle of the field. Rather than running a flood directly to one side and letting Gibbs come straight under one at a time, the red create that lane, forcing the pride to guard each player going each direction, and all that Gibbs needed to do was free herself up a couple steps in the back. Throw comes off beautifully from Dudley, could not ask for better placement, and that's a hold, a needed one for the Indianapolis Red. Haley Bana's getting ready for the pull here for Indy Red. There it is. Soars nicely to the middle of the field. Pride get the action restarted with Sam Phillips there. Pestered once again by those lane poaches of the Indianapolis Red. It's like you have Jenny Perry for Pride working it in the middle of the field there. 
A lot of angle put on that throw. Gives the red time to close in. Disc is made. great read by number seven. Delaney, Delaney Marcelek brings it down. Mary Turner now getting the end zone offense started for the Columbus Pride. Does not take the inside look. Pushes back to Cunningham instead. Unfortunate drop. Pride was looking to punch it in on the fourth side. I think Marcelek, sorry, I think that mast there was running out of space and it gave her one too many things to try to pay attention to. Not able to secure the goal there. And I'd really like to see Pride swing it around to the opposite side of the field. Bannis finds Frazier. Puts a ton of distance between herself and her mark. And there's a block. No foul called by Mylink, who's going to stay. Blocked by number 91, Samantha Phillips. And there it is. But it's right to Haley Bannis. Knocks it down. Another block for the Indy Red. Trading blocks. Red are doing a great job of getting one, two throws into their flow. Good focus by Manis, keeps the disc in the hands of the red. And a lot of bobbles going on. Umeno uncorks Wyckoff around the defender. And the red are knocking on the door. End zone offense. Umeno with the disc in her hand, fakes a hammer. Indy Red also punching it over there on that sideline. I'd really love to see a swing to open. Great cut by Riso Meno. And there's Wyckoff disc just That's out of the, the hands of Bannis. That's the look you want. That's the cut you want. It's just precision there with the throw. An opportunity to stop them on the goal line. Indianapolis Red have Mylink, Burris, and Frazier there. Looking to really stop anything to the middle of the field. Red in zone once again. With this zone, the red will need to really do a better job of picking up players who are piercing into that cup, as does Jenny Perry. You have Bree Burris hunting for that D. Almost gets the hand block as we say it. Mm -hmm. Frazier almost gets her own. Rowell with the disc on the near sideline, pushing to Cunningham. Cunningham trying to go every other. Incredible grab and flip over from Rowell, but injury signaled. Great grab and double zeros. No full injury call. Rowell shakes it out, gets herself hyped back up. Tap in from Frazier, and we're back in it. Cunningham still looking to go every other. Roll playing for Rival last year. And was their grinder. I remember playing against her. This is a little far, but well read by Cunningham. They're getting everything they want going up the line right now. Turner back to Cunningham. Red staying in this zone. These throws are getting harder, but Cunningham still content to just sit inside of that, of that cup, which is spaced out plenty now. Red fading more back into person defense. Bannis, no run through there. Wehrwein not able to get a block around the pride. Number seven, Delaney Marsalek reels it in. Just under a minute left, Columbus Pride are up 8-6 over the Indianapolis Red. Pride worked that beautifully because when you have a zone up, you want to make that zone run. And it's just lots of teeny tiny passes until you can work it through the cup and then break it wide open for a deep throw. Forcing the swings to be wider and wider is one of the main goals of this 3-3-1 three, three, zone from the Indy Red, but they will need to do something to stop penetration into that cup. Cunningham going near every other on that point, found everything that she wanted inside of those three red defenders all the way downfield for a goal. Yeah, and I think it's a matter of legs. You know, when you have fresh legs at the beginning of the game, the cup is a little bit more effective, but the holes in the cup is what can make the zone break down. Perhaps this is where my link is showing the fact that she just got back from some travel. Hard to uh, 
routinely pinch in and out there, trying to stop those little throws from going off. Red offense getting it started. McClurkin with the disc in her hands. Nice around mark from the pride. Finds Schloniger upfield. Nice toes there from Dudley. Immediately inside throw to Maya. Good holster from Hutchings not to take the deep throw. There's Schloniger, hand blocked by number 21, Mal Griffith. 20 seconds left, Red are gonna need a block now or never if they wanna have another look at the end zone here. Pride, all they need to do is hold on to the disc. There it is! Five seconds left. Matamore finds wow. McClurkin. Seven, eight, Indianapolis Red get a needed goal at the end of the first half. One second left on the clock. Clutch defensive block by Liza. What a run through. Hutchings says absolutely not. We, we end this half on our terms. And we see her just stick her hand right in there. Little flip to McClurkin, goes for the spike, fakes can, it off instead. Yeah, you can tell HG was looking for that easy swing and wasn't going to the disc, and Eliza was able to run through. So one second still on the clock here. Columbus Pride are going to have the entire length of the field to go. However, no pressure from the clock. That second will tick off as the pull goes up. And all that they need to do is hold on to the disc. Red, it's gonna be really, really important to force difficult, difficult throws and try to sneak a block in where they can. They won't get a look at the end zone, but they really, really need to keep the pride from scoring here. Disc is swung to Cunningham. We have some brackets happening, Indy Red. We have Werewine and Foster forcing inside. A beautiful beautiful piece of handler defense from Banisk. There's yeah. the drop. That's the end of the half. So we end on serve. Columbus Pride up 8-7. Sorry, up a break. Currently up 8-7 on the Indianapolis Red. Coming into the second half, the Red are going to need to find a couple breaks to get back on top here. That's halftime, folks. The score is Indy Red 7, Columbus Pride. Are they spaceships from Mars? No, they're Frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at Toy Drug and Department Stores.
what are they? Spaceships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at toy, drug, and department stores. It's halftime here in Indianapolis. Indy Red down to the Columbus Pride, 7-8. Pride put on a defensive master class, plus took advantage of a little bit of red mistakes in there. We want to remind you that halftime is brought to you by True Enhanced Sparkling Water. Whether you need to wake up, work out, or wind down, there is a True for every moment. They are made with zero grams of sugar, low calories, and real juice. You can get True for 25% off at Drink True. That's T-R-U dot com with the code on your flyer. That's drink true, T-R-U dot com. And we would also like to remind you that none of this happens for free. Please support the Indie Red if you are enjoying the live stream by scanning the QR code here. Whether you can give one, five, ten, twenty, a hundred, whatever. The Indie Red, thank you for your support. It goes from everything to reserving field and practice sites, getting team uniforms, helping them travel to play these tough Midwestern divisional games and more. Please consider giving to the Red and supporting these players. Kristen, KK, what are you liking in the first half from the Red so far? I really like the de defensive sets that they're putting on. I think that they're keeping it um, exciting. They're not trying to lull the pride to sleep with a person defense or a zone. They're mixing it up each time, even throwing in some brackets and some funky defensive sets, and I think we're going to see even more of that in the second half. Contestant number two. I have to agree with you here, and thinking about it, the zone look has done a good job of like forcing the pride to change their angles. Historically, though, over the course of the season, the two games that we have lost the worst in lost period are the games in which we really weren't willing to mess with the looks, sticking with a more traditional zone to fire call. I think that the zone has worked right now. We've seen a lot of turnovers on those swings, but our person defense has been the thing that won us the games against the Monarchs and the Soul. Um, I, you have to wonder if the coaches are talking about perhaps how do we adjust the looks can we are we sending out zone personnel are we sending out matchup personnel you know can we mix those groups a little bit and give ourselves other opportunities yeah i also think that they're probably looking at who has been most effective for pride and put indie reds 
you know, best defensive players, the ones that are really hunting for those blocks on those players, I would imagine that they're probably going to make some really smart matchups coming up here. And on for the Pride right now, they are winning the track race and they are winning the possession battle of much, much fewer mistakes for the Pride. And they are getting near every run through block opportunity. A lot of these unders are not, for the red are not coming without heavy pressure from the Columbus Pride. It's not that the red don't have the athletes or the legs to win these matchups. The Pride are doing it with phenomenal setup and trust that the next person in line down the field is going to be doing their job. It lets you commit 100% to your defensive assignment. Yeah, and you see Camp McGuire making those big fakes in the handler space, and Pride in the handler space are opening up the field by hitting the inside break throw almost every time, which is exactly what they're looking for, because when you hit that inside break throw, then you're going to open up the field on the break side. So we will look for more action in the second half. We'll be back from break in just a few moments. Are they spaceships from Mars? No, they're frisbees. Watch it soar. It flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee Flying Saucer. Yours at Toy Drug and Department Stores. <laughs> are back here in Indianapolis. Midwest division action going on. Indianapolis Red down seven to eight to the Columbus Pride visitors from Ohio. Excellent defensive pressure and execution in the backfield has gotten the Pride to this lead receiving looking to go up a break. We wanna take some time to thank some of our sponsors. This broadcast of the PUL brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. And we would also like to thank Discraft. The Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. So the red set to pull down a break. A hold here will have the pride up 9-7. The red looking for some answers on defense, getting the blocks, getting the pressure not getting the execution from their D-line offense. We'll see if they can right that ship here in the second half. It's a nice pull by Emily Werwine. Already breaking through the center of the cup. Uh, Rachel Mast, one of the best at finding space on this Columbus Pride team. Over Those. a roll on the low sideline. 
The fakes are making Indy Red crash into those spaces and really opening up the arounds. There it is, a much better pickup in the middle. Foster not quite able to get there, that was going a against Mass. Silky throw by Cavaguire. There's Rowell knocking on the door for the Columbus Pride. Alex Hu chasing Phillips around. Bailout throw goes up, but comfortably into the hands of Jenny Perry. I think there was a pick call. A little bit of a collision on the field. Make sure everyone's okay. Looking at the setup here, the Red are going to need a really, really tough mark from Burris right now. Foster closing the distance, still conversing with the Columbus Pride player. Perry does not take an immediate look. Sails that one up. And who, in fierce competition there, watches the disc to the front of her feet. She'll pick up, take it to the front of the end zone. I like that look, though. Over to the opposite side of the field, you can probably trust one of your players to get there, but just not enough air. Too far. Risa Umeno sells out, not able to secure the grab. Phenomenal sideline defense continues from the Columbus Pride. Disc a little behind Mass, does not matter. Puts into the hands of Turner. That's the hold for the Pride at 9-7 advantage over the Indianapolis Red. It's the risk of turning it over on the end zone. The other team has a chance to get a quick and easy score. And it starts with McGuire. Disc is a little bit behind Mass, but it does not matter. A comfortable throw that floats, lets Mast make the turnaround, get the grab, and continue the disc over to Turner. A big hold for the Pride. The Red need to do it one at a time here in the second half. Get a hold, see one go through the hoop, then look at setting a tough, tough defensive line and trying to get one of these breaks back. We see some of the usual suspects out there for the Columbus Pride. Can probably expect T. Lowe to center the disc, probably look for a big hook right off the bat. McGuire starts it with a deep pull to the Indy Red. Fielded by Mattimore over to T. Lowe in the middle. Does not continue a swing to Kristen Dudley. It's smart to keep the disc in the middle of the field. You have more options. Power position does not go off. Hernandez centers to Hutchings. Upfield to Milton. Nice flow from the red right now, looking to move quickly. There's Hutchings again, closer to that far sideline. I think Eliza's looking to put the team on our back here. Use those legs to run and grind once again. Big step around. Tracy low makes the mark look like they're not even there. Milton pushes to Eliza. We are on the door. Cross field, there it is. Kristen Dudley snags the disc. Red, a very, very clean hold. Down one, eight, nine to the Columbus Pride. Eliza had some kind of different energy in her legs there. You could tell that she just really wanted to get this one. Perhaps she tried a true sparkling water and it got her jazzed up. <laughs> Couple more shout outs here. Good shout out. BK Easiest offensive point of the game for the Indianapolis Red. As you said, Eliza Hutchings putting the team on her back. Red look re-energized. And they will need a big defensive stand here to even the game back up at nines. Columbus Pride not looking to change a whole lot. They found what they've wanted on offense, really getting into their rhythm in the second quarter. For them, it's business as usual trying to maintain this two this one hold, one break advantage over the Indianapolis Red. Pull goes up from Warewine. Off the hands of Perry, up to Phillips, and the Pride have started action. Staying in the zone are the Indianapolis Red. This is this looks a little bit different.
Little more rabbiting in the backfield this time from Fraser, trying really to turn this more into a cup rather than the wall that it has been so far. You can tell that they've adapted. Cunningham has been really cutting them up in those small spaces, so they've adjusted having a little bit more chase after her instead of just a wall with a lot of swings. And a little bit different personnel. There you have it. There it is, Alex Hu over to Bannis. Red with a big break opportunity. Give go action. That's the look you want. Excellent look, disc just a little bit too far for Burris, but that's what you want in this point. You've made the pride drop one. They're thinking about it a little bit more. Some say that the second opportunity is easier than the first. We'll see if that holds true here. Stall getting high, timeout called. Defensive adjustment, successful so far for the Indianapolis Red. Pride not able to find the pieces that were working for them earlier in this game, forcing a timeout. And we'll see how the Red adjust to really secure this break opportunity. We would love to take some time to remind you that this broadcast is brought to you by MDMI. Materials Data Management has the experience and drive necessary to help your organization deploy the best in engineering materials information management solutions. Check us out on LinkedIn for our current job openings and our website, materialsdatamanagement.com for a list of our services and software. Data importers, exporters, and consulting to MDMI is here for you. Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, you indie sports team photographer and Indie Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter if you need sports or fashion, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook or Instagram or online, everyonesjoyphotography.com. Discstore.com has the guaranteed lowest prices on everything. If you find a cheaper price, they'll beat it by 5%. Go to discstore.com for the best prices on all your ultimate needs, including discs, jerseys, apparel, and swag. Indianapolis Red staying in their zone look. Substitution, Kat McGuire with the disc in her hands now for the pride. Joined by Graham Cunningham in the backfield. Still, hammer goes off from McGuire. Bannis in the area. Block secured. Roll not able to hold on to the disc. That zone forces those wonky looks to the break side. It's exactly what you want when running that zone. And Emily Wyckoff put on a cutting clinic, but... A it's timeout like have taken. Another timeout. We did what we needed to do. We forced a high stall, difficult throw and catch off the hammer from McGuire over to Rowell. Bannis, plenty of time to run on that disc. Gets a block. A little bit of swinging to get us to the middle of the Can field and the likely timeout? a switch Just to the offensive line. Running. And in fact, I do see... Gibbs, Kitten, and Tilo down there talking with Jackie Lai. An obvious O-line switch coming out here. Red, know how important it is to secure this break and even this game back up. Yeah, I would imagine they might have a play call or an isolation for a certain player in the end zone. I do want to shout out Emily Wyckoff, though. Before the timeout goes off there, absolutely put her defender in a blender. Phenomenal deep cut, fake, plants, goes over her left shoulder, comes back under who had already looked away from her to swing back to the middle of the field. But that is a difference in effort that we're seeing from the red here in this second half, the willingness to do the extra couple things to free yourself up to go secure a block, to ensure that you make the catch. That's been the difference maker so far. You can tell the team is amped up by this energy. Looks like we have Kitty Dyer-Cox isolated in the front of the stack. We'll see they can get the disc. Some like to call that the danger zone if you're the opposing team. <laughs> <laughs> nice fill cut by Dyer. Finds Gibbs upfield and just run through by Rowell. Unfortunate. Schloniger had gone out a little bit too far and Rowell just came straight into the lane. Cunningham unmarked up to McGuire. On that far sideline, a little bit more trap mark focus from the red at this point. There it is, aired out. Turner all alone gets the grab, but no help. 
Dyer has time to put a mark on, and we have a defender downfield. Stall count starting to rise. Back to McGuire. Mattimore giving chase. Nice swing. Dyer had her back's turn, not able to make a play there. Pruitt in the middle of the field. And McGuire is just generating all kinds of yardage right now. Little hop from Tilo does not convince her opponent to go up with her. And that's a great look from Kat into the end zone to look towards the back of the end zone where you have all of that space and the defender is trailing behind. Good patience off the turn there for the pride. We see Pruitt by McGuire and just nicely aired out. Tilo, I have to think there, if they'd continued on with the trajectory of the disc, would have had more and better positioning to make a play there. I do respect the, perhaps I can convince this person to go up with me, but just well read by the pride. Stay on their original line, catch the disc, and that's another hold for Columbus. Yeah, sometimes it's just a fraction of a second where you decide to keep running or you decide to pull up and jump can be the complete difference of whether you get that block or not. In the red now, all of that work done to come away empty, still down two to this Columbus side. It's been decision making and it's been execution. We get an offsides call though. Offsides call is going to give the red tremendously favorable position here, taking the disc up to the halfway mark. Some conversation still going on between the Columbus Pride coaches and the officials in this game. Anna McClurkin waiting with the disc. And we will be taking the disc from the brick mark, about 20 yards outside the end zone. McClurkin, disc in their hands. Rachel Graber on the mark, up to Milton. Good adjustment there, finds Hutchings. We'll see if Hutchings can keep playing Energizer Bunny for this red team. Good swing around to Mattimore. Continues to McClurkin, little air bounce there, but McClurkin brings it down with no problem. Pick called. Good swinging by the Indianapolis Red is opening up a lot more angles for them. Offense is feeling a lot more fluid and easy compared to the first half. There's Gibbs, finds Schloniger up the line. Dudley fakes McClurkin off, doesn't like that look. Chooses Milton there on the sideline. Good in cut, but another pick called. Eliza Hutchings trying to find some separation. Defender perhaps tried to squeeze themselves through a gap that wasn't really there. Mm -hmm. A little clogged in the middle. Scuba hand blocked. Milton had Dudley behind her for an easy reset. You don't want to lose yards, but a free reset is better than a hand block 100% of the time. So Not able to earn the downfield block. Back. Little confusion in the backfield for the Red, but they find their assignments. What a layout. Everything going the Pride way this game. Graber al all alone, unmarked, finds Champ Pruitt. Off balance, low throw, secured by Barnhart. Nice foot by Mattimore, stops that inside throw from going off. And a Ten time out. out taken. Six, 
second. Time out of the half taken here by the Columbus Pride. They are all out. We still have six minutes of this quarter to play in an entire fourth quarter yet. Yeah, that's a really interesting choice. There's a lot of game time left. So using all of your timeouts early in the half, we'll see how that works out for them moving in the fourth quarter. It looked like, I believe that it was Matamore on the disc there got a piece of it as it was released. And if it was not Matamore, then it was Schlonegger hands up on the turn, without turning around, had created a problem on the catch there. Timeout call though, goes off first. The Pride will have a chance to take a deep breath and recalibrate about 30 yards outside the end zone. McGuire, of course, to pick the disc up. We'll see if Pride can capitalize on this timeout. This is a really critical point for them since they've utilized their timeout. It's really important that they score here. D-line on the field for the Indianapolis Red. Banis, Hu, Umeno, Foster, Burris, Wyckoff, Frazier. Looking to get a big stop here. Looks like a flood play. Open to the break side to number four. Low throw to Mast. McGuire chased by Banis. Hybrid teammates in the club season. Opponents here today. Another low throw from McGuire. The that, release angles are crazy. They are. That it, almost looked like it hit the turf as it came out of her hands. Rowell reels it in. That is another goal for the Pride, and they are up. Yeah, that was a really important point for them, and they knew it too. You could tell by their play call. You saw all the top three players in the front of the stack clear to the fourth side, and you had the break side. The last person in the stack came up to the break side wide open so that they could dink it down the side of the field. 11-8, a break reeled in by the Columbus Pride. Score going in the wrong direction for the Indianapolis Red. Looking for answers out on offense. Pride feeling themselves and able to start exploring the depth of the roster a little bit more, but we see some all-stars out there still. H.G. Morrison, Griffith, McGuire, Pruitt, all on the field. Pride looking to make a statement in this last game of the season. The Red trying to push ahead to 4-2. and two. A lot of work to do between now and the end of this game. 5-38 remaining. And we'll see how this offensive line can come out and handle business. Tilo, Kitten, Hernandez, Milton, Schloniger. Pride was able to get down there on defense to stop those initial cuts. Katie Dyer comes down with that deep throw to Schloniger. And there it is, three throws, one goal. Katie Dyer Cox didn't even see the disc go up and it didn't matter. Perfectly placed by Kitten. And then immediately off of the grab from Dyer Cox, flips it ahead to Schloniger, whose patience with that cut timing allowed her to immediately generate some distance. Easy throw, and that's a goal. Pride had a really good defensive set on the on Red's Himmlers and really shut down those resets. And so Kitten had no other choice but to put it deep. So it was just fortunate that we had the right personnel downfield to grab in Katie Dyer Cox. One of the greatest rostering decisions of all time and team management decisions here. Having both Tracy Lowe and Lauren Kitten in the backfield, two incredible left-handed power throwers, one of the biggest advantages in the league. Sometimes it's just a matter of which one of them picks up on which day. Incredible placement on that throw from Kitten, bail out or not. That's right. Werewine gets it started. Perry on the disc. No inside lane attack. Zone out there for the Indianapolis Red. Umeno, Foster, and Oland giving chase in the middle of the field. Tough lane, but good catch by the Pride. Tubing up the field a little bit. Who almost gets their hand on it? Cunningham is still going every other. We saw her do that early in the first half with great success. Yeah, and just slicing through that zone. And they're still in it, still running that zone. It is interesting to me how late they do decide to stay in that zone. 
That's a great defense by Sidney Olin and almost, almost saved. Sidney Olin knows how to show up in a big game. Incredible upline cut. We may know nice upline run there, shadowed by Cunningham. Foster in the in the deep field has been pretty quiet today. Looks like they've had number 18 on number on Foster and have stopped those deep throws, deep puts to Foster. And there's Burris up the line. Indianapolis Red break back. Down one now to the Columbus Pride, 11 to 10. That's the energy that this Red team has been looking for all game. And it's just up the line, cuts all the way. Burris to Umeno, back to Burris there on the sideline. Excellent pressure from Rachel Mast to no avail. The Red get a break back. They need it. Four minutes remaining in this third quarter and the Red are down a single goal. Red's energized and you see the air has come out of the tires a little bit for pride. They're walking back, but it is important to stay steady and solid and consistent on O. Probably taking a few deep breaths on their way back to the line. Anna McClurkin ready to pull for Indy Red. And the stands are finally showing up Big for the pull. Red. Big pull from McClurkin to huge cheers from the audience here for the Indianapolis Red. Far too many pride jerseys in the stands for my liking. <laughs> it is only three hours over to Columbus though. It is. We've seen Hutchings has made a rotation. Mackenzie Mattimore, Katie Dyer Cox, a couple O-line players out there. Inches away from that defense block. I wanted Hutchings to sell out and secure that layout. I understand the decision to preserve the effort. And they get it anyway, bobbled by Cunningham. They were looking to move a little bit too fast in the cup. Not so patient as they were the first time. And a lefty break from T. Lowe. Hutchings content to give it right back to T. Lowe. They fake the big around. Dyer Cox in the middle of the field. Initiates Mattimore. Finds Milton with plenty of space. It's like there's a call. Hutchings perhaps felt that they were run through a little bit there by number 38, Jenny Perry. Yeah, most importantly, it's whether... It, it didn't look like there was a ton of body contact, maybe a little bit through the hands and arms, but maybe looking if Eliza had stop rotation on the disc. Foul call is upheld. Eliza Hutchings will take possession of the disc 10 yards outside of the end zone. Disc sails up. McClurkin. Sky is a pack, including her own teammate. Brings it down. Low, inside, and perfectly placed for Eliza Hutchings. Skittles Milton finds number 24. That is a second break in a row, and we are back on serve, tied at 11s. Skittles also left-handed, so that inside Backhand throw is so hard to guard. And with two players in the lane, it wasn't necessarily the look that Skittles was going for, but to pay her a huge compliment, does a phenomenal job of manipulating the mark slowly but surely opening up that inside lane until finally she can find Hutchings there. Katie Dyer Cox also in the neighborhood is a little extra security. And that's two breaks in a row, three points in a row for the Indianapolis Red. Set to pull again, Bannis, Foster, Frazier, Wyckoff, Mylink, Umeno, and Burris out there. Seeing if they can make it three breaks in a row, get that break train rolling. Red's feeling good. I see them bopping around there, this is some music. Sometimes you just need a little extra air in the sails and you have to do it with the oars. 
Legs really being the difference maker for the red here in the second half. There's McGuire with the disc. Alora Reef in the backfield with her, but swinging over to Perry. Risa stopping that swing. McGuire having to go every other short dink and dunk passes right now. She and Perry just passing the disc back and forth, trying to reset this stall count as often as they can. Disc is aired up. Foster right there. Catch block. Houston's Anastasia Foster gets it back for the red. And we have another opportunity here. Wyckoff fakes off the huge deep throw. Finds Bannis over to Umeno. Has Burris all alone. Fakes it. Takes Foster in the middle of the field. Good slide and grab in the red. Patiently finding the looks that they want. Aired out by Frazier. Oh, and McGuire with some heroics of her own to make sure that Mylink has to make a contested grab. And it, it is dropped. It was a great look by Linnea Frazier. Just needed some more lift on the disc to get over the defender. McGuire is tremendously athletic. You really have to air it out to avoid her. Still in that zone. And Pride is not working it through the middle of the, the zone as they once were, but now they're dinking it up the field. Red finally resets. There it is in the middle. Reef to McGuire. From on the goal line to halfway up the field and with excellent position. And those middle of the throws are what the zone is trying to take away. But and it that works. was a lucky mistake. Lucky mistake indeed, or perhaps the zone working. Throw too far. A little air under that though, and there was gonna be a tons of room for a play to be made. Wide open and cut to Emily Wyckoff. Wyckoff is so patient and so choosy about the spaces she attacks. What a grab. Bree Burris reels it in, advancing ahead to Frazier in the red, working with some pace once again. They've changed the angle of their swings and all of a sudden they're feeling a lot less pressure and are able to reset the field as they want. Disc high, floaty. Oh. Usually Foster can come down with those. Foster has such sticky hands, but maybe we'll see it later. Coming over her own back, trying to make sure she gets up high enough. And that is the end of the third quarter, time expiring. We are tied, Indy Red 11, Columbus Pride 11. We will be right back with fourth quarter action here in Indianapolis. Are they spaceships from Mars? No, they're Frisbees. Watch it soar, it flies way around like a bird. You can even run for a pass. You can play all kinds of games. Isn't it amazing? Frisbee flying saucer. Yours at Toy Drug and Department Stores.
are back with Premier Ultimate League action. Top of the fourth quarter, Indianapolis Red and Columbus Pride are tied, and we want to remind you this live broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Spin Ultimate. Spin Ultimate, providing custom team uniforms and ultimate apparel since 2007. Visit Spin on the web at spinultimate.com. The Red incredible series of breaks at the end of that third quarter to get it tied back up at 11 and in the most advantageous position of all receiving the disc at the top of this fourth quarter all you need is a hold to regain the advantage as that pull goes up from mcguire it's a stiff wind doesn't get the distance on it that she may have been looking for great holster by Kristen dudley to make sure that that uh, Pride player didn't get the run through D right off the pole. Hernandez faked off by Kitten. Pushes ahead to Dudley. There's the huck attempt. And it just curves the wrong way for Milton. And the red needing a hold there to take the lead. Inexplicably give the disc up. A good look to Milton. The wrong shape on the throw. So we're looking for Eliza, Tilo, Maya, Skittles, and Gibbs to really clamp down on defense here see if they can get the turn on their end zone Hernandez happy to play the lane a little bit more and leave Turner not unguarded but a little more free on that far side before picking her back up Turner right streaking deep zone. no one down there they just keep pushing them back further person defense and a lot of rolling working out for the red so far nice around break that's what you want in the ground too far for Emily Evans. Fantastic handler defense by T. Lode, Eliza. And Dudley picks up. Kitten up line. There's Hernandez. Nice around. And hard bid, hard landing for Tracy Lowe. And they are right back up and on the mark. Disc high. Brought back down by Hernandez. Kitten fakes off Tilo. Hand block. Foul called. No contest. Mal Griffith, excellent use of the hand signs there. Leaving us no question about what's going on. A little Hutchings. clogged in the lane there. And Indy Red comes up with a score. And there it is. A break by way of possession at the top of the quarter. Indy Red are up 12-11, getting their lead back when it matters most. You had both Gibbs and Eliza there in the open space, both going for the disc. But the communication, I bet someone was talking, saying, I have the disc and Eliza came down with it, Gibbs going to the end zone. Phenomenal defensive effort there from Mary Turner as well, but created some confusion with her and Champ Prude about who was going to pick up which person, and Hutchings, happy to push the pace as we've seen all game, says, I, I'm not going to be bothered by this immediate flip to Gibbs. Good score for the Indy Red, a needed hold. On defense, the red looking to trot out a usual D-line. Burris, Umeno, Foster, Hu, Wearwine, Frazier. Looks like a zone line to me. If it looks like a zone line, smells like a zone line, it's probably a zone <laughs> line there. KK, pull is up, and we have definitively crossed into an upwind-downwind game. These right-to-left pulls are hitting cement walls of wind about the halfway mark of the field. What a find by Perry over to Reef. Completely reshapes the field for the Pride. Cunningham operating a little more downfield before finally dropping into the backspace for a moment. Perry with the disc in her hands finds Cunningham piercing into that cup. Disc a little high, almost into the face of Perry. Nice swing over to Phillips. A little more space in this cup there between Burris and who They'll need to tighten that up if they want to get some of the blocks they were securing earlier. Cunningham is going straight through it every time, but a drop! Phillips lets it right through her hands. 
sometimes those, those zippy throws can come un unexpectedly or a little lower than expected. And four throws into this possession so far. The Red are content to just take the open throw. A little contested there for Werewine. Yeah, they're not going to let this Indy Red score without some, without a grind here. Foster shows off the hops, bringing that disc down. Oland is forced to play some bump and grind offense, but maintains possession shoulder to shoulder with the pride. Alex Hu airs it out, but Werewine just crossed too far to the left, had looked away from Hu. I could tell that Hu really wanted that end zone by the way that she brought the disc back and was just ready to put it no matter what, and then Emily wasn't really looking, fortunately. That's been one of the stories for this red team today. A lot of these have been miscommunications. Players looking away from their throwers instead of getting good calls from the sideline and from their teammates, but there is a drop. And the Red will have another opportunity for the break. Roll oh. over commits. Oland, Umeno in the end zone. A break for the Indy Red, 13-11. Yeah, that was an unfortunate slip by a roll because it opened up that swing and then open break side cuts all day. An incredible defensive effort turns into heartbreak for Maggie Rowell and good patience by the Red to watch it all the way through. We see that go off and she just overcommits, loses her footing and Olin doesn't need to do anything except turn and sees Umeno there towards that low sideline. Needed break, big advantage here. 13-11 for the Indianapolis Red in the game where breaks have been a little difficult to come by for the team in red. So now Pride is working it upwind a little bit at this point. So it'll be interesting to see if they're able to adjust, and we'll see if Indy Red maybe put their person defense on here as well. Maybe a zone. It's not the zone personnel, but if it is upwind, then it might be a possibility. We know as ultimate players the importance of the upwind break. Red with a massive advantage now. The Pride forced to work it into this much stiffer wind. Matamore, Dyer Cox, Schlonegger. Like we do have a zone. Very athletic line out there for the Red, looking to do a little bit more chasing and really take advantage of anything that may pop up in the breeze. The way they have the, the zone set up here is Kitty Dyer Cox in this space to hunt for that D on the swing. And the crowd getting rowdy. Defense cheers ringing out as stalls rise higher and higher with each throw for the pride. Stalls getting really high here every time they pass the disc. Bailey Perkins gives McGuire a bailout and puts the disc right back in her hands. Nice low throw straight to McClurkin. Cat just holding on to the disc a little too long. Now Red's working it up. Takes the free reset to McClurkin. Hand blocked. McClurkin does not step out far enough. Mast smacks the disc, and we get it right back. Tyre Cox says no way. Good body by McClurkin. Makes sure that McGuire can't come around and get a hand on it. That's another break for the Indy Red. Three-point advantage, six-point swing in total. Yeah, and shout-out to Kat, who made sure to be really safe during that defensive play. Yes, not definitely a place where she had a good line. McClurkin, good positioning, but put herself into a place where, you know, put themselves into a place where they couldn't be made without a little bit of contact. A, one of those kind of infuriating plays when you're an ultimate player, I have a line and they just put themselves in the way. That ruins my ability to go out and make something happen without, you know, endangering one or both of us. No, no call though, no contest on anything. 14-11, Indy Red on top of this Columbus Pride team with six minutes remaining. Pride looking for answers of their own now after everything going their way for about 75% of this game. 
they will need to stop the bleeding here. Indy Red says, why not keep doing the zone if it's working? They got to throw out essentially an O-line with the zone, and the, this D-line is coming out active and ready. And it works. Werewine, disc right into her hands. Excellent run down on that disc. Manus up to Wyckoff. Good hezzy step from Mylink and patience from Bannis. Cunningham was in the area. And there it is. Great Red. save by Bree Burris. Red finding some of that hustle that the Pride had earlier. There's always a second person there to make up the disc. Linnea looking deep, maybe. Middle of the field to Emily. A little bit clogged in the middle of the field, but great reset. There's Werewine Bannis all alone, eventually picked up by Phillips before the upline throw can go off. Umeno has swaths of land over to that break side, but no one cutting. Great switch defensively by Pride. Pride have found their defensive rhythm a little bit close to the end zone. Pick called. The defensive switches are also an underrated defensive play, I think especially in those giving goes. Nice pick up by Champ Pruitt there. Doesn't let the easy in cut go off. Frazier heavily pestered by Perry. Foul signaled. Number 12, great defense on Umeno. Morgan Johnson. Really putting a stiff defensive front out there for the Pride. Disc floats up for Bannis. Slips free of the defender, and there's another goal. Indy Red, 15. Columbus Pride, 11. The swing continues. Seven points now turned around for the Indianapolis Red squad. Indy Red, 15. Columbus Pride, 11. A couple more shout-outs to Indy Club team. Sarah Hoffman, Jessica Hoffman, Jessica if you know where the person is going to go, I think um, Morgan, number 12, was putting their body right where Risa wanted to go. Makes that upline cut incredibly difficult because where else do you turn to look? If you're clearing, you're now down another look in your offensive flow. Bannis felt like she ran the shortest check mark cut of all time, down maybe two steps before planting and going back into the upline space. Nicely placed disc to her and another Indy Red goal. If you're the pride, what are you doing now? You've got four minutes left. How are you adjusting to try to get yourself back on the board and reestablish your momentum? I think you have to play one throw and one point at a time. Short memory. You can't think about the past. You have to play your offensive sets and play into your own game, not play to the defensive plays that Indy Red's making. Trusting your players. H.G. Morrison going every other, making some very athletic plays for the pride. Roll now quickly advancing the disc with Mast. I think they could get Roll in there quite a lot more as well. Really quick player. Aired out, but who else but Gibbs? Maybe getting a little antsy to try to get it in the end zone. Gibbs up to Kitten. Nice mark from Roll. Forces the fake from Kitten. High release. Too high. Turner up to Roll. And remember, they've got no timeouts. They have to do everything with the lines that are out there, and it works this time. A hold for the Columbus Pride for 15-12. They finally get back on the scoreboard. And a lot of O-line players on that point for the Red. We'll see who they trot out for this next possession. And Roll finds Mass. Mass comfortably advances the disc upfield to Turner. I would imagine that Pride is looking to put on some universe point lines for probably the remainder of the game to get the D. So their most athletic players on the line, their most skilled handlers on the line, 
so that when they get that D, they can pick up and put it deep as quickly as possible. Indy Red will be countering with sort of a hybrid line. We see Gibbs out there, McClurkin, Hernandez, Dyer, Cox, Schloniger, Matamor, and Duds. Three minutes, 12 seconds left. As we creep closer to the end of this game, tight as it is remembering that the fourth quarter is the only quarter with different rules for the end. It has a true buzzer beater mentality. Centered to Anna McClurkin or to Duds. Well pressured by number nine there, Emily Evans. Almost got a hand on it. Dyer Cox on the far sideline. Finds Gibbs. No one open. Deep downfield. Excellent cut by Schloniger is rewarded. Breaks free. That's an easy goal for the Indianapolis Red. Sent her defender with an all expenses paid trip to somewhere else. <laughs> Yeah, the, per the pride defensive player um, sold out all the way by trying to guard the inside cut, and that let Schloniger to have a wide open deep cut to the end zone. On this red team, Emily Schloniger is free to operate downfield a lot more. Her club team, Fort Wayne Truck, participating in the USA Eagle Ultimate Club Series in the summer, normally has to do a lot of on-disc touches for her team, free to operate downfield and reel in easy throws from players like Gibbs with this red side. Fox says I can give a shout out to myself as well, so to Ruth from Ruth, shout out. And as quickly as they were able to right the ship as it may have felt for the pride, the red punch right back, not happy to yield any of their four-point advantage. Werewine, nice pull straight down the middle of the field, gets bolstered by the wind just a little bit. Extra five yards or so, and the pride start their attack. And it is a testament to the Indy Red coaching staff and players. The zone, which was not working for them early on in this game, has become one of their greatest weapons. It's chewing up time. It's forcing a million throws. It was a matter of waiting for the legs and patience of the Pride to run out. Risa Umeno reads perfectly, gets a block. Olin happy to let things clean themselves up in the middle of the field. There's Foster back to Umeno. And Frazier finds Werewine. That's another break for the Indy Red, running away with it. 17 to 12 over the Columbus Pride. Just under two minutes remaining in this contest. So that play got started with Sydney's break throw to Foster on the break side and it completely discombobulated the defense with wide open cuts. Discombobulated. Ten point word. <laughs> Ten point best. word. Five point lead. And it's all Indy Red in this fourth quarter. I love Frazier's development as a thrower over the last couple seasons for the Indy Red. They are a rangy defender, long arms, Athletic in the air, able to come down with a lot of discs, an excellent counterpart to foster on those D-lines. But the way that they have really evolved their game has been with their throwing prowess. Those looks can be difficult because it can be too easy to say, oh, that's really open, I'm just going to hit this nice flick to space. Delivers it with perfect poise, where wine reels it in. Yeah, Linnea has developed a lot as a player, and we're going to see a lot more of Linnea in the years to come as well. Taking over as one of the head coaches of the IU Calamity Janes in this coming season. An excellent chance to sharpen their ultimate IQ as well. Mm -hmm. I think Red's happy to run his own for the remainder of this game. And this is a O-line defensive line mix happening. Or maybe this is just the full O-line on for defense, giving the other D-line a break. A well-earned and well-deserved break for this Indy Red D-line. 
O-line out here doing some work with the zone. Chewed through about 30 seconds of the clock so far, and though the Pride are advancing upfield, it doesn't feel like they're any closer to bringing it in. Finally, nice pierce through to Barnhart. Fire call echoes out, switching to matchup defense for the red. Gibbs down there on Marcelek. And inside of a minute left, Barnhart with the disc in her hands, knocking on the door for the Pride, trying to get one more hold secured. Nice Lee placed swing. Out to Turner, high disc up in the air for Perkins. Elijah and there's a block. The Maybe in your end trying to push it in for one more score at the end of the game here. With Tilo picking up. Tilo, Duds, Kitten in the backfield. And this is their O line, so they're comfortable here. Finds Dyer Cox. Aired out. Skittles Milton downfield. No one down there with her, but. Plenty of time to get a reset into the hands of Tilo. Gibbs up the line. Duds there. And blocked by Alora Reef as time expires. Good defense by Pride to end the game. Didn't give up. Love to see it. And there you have it. Final game of the season for the Indy Red. They take the victory in Massive comeback style, 17-12 over the Columbus Pride. We want to thank you all for joining the Indy Red on their campaign over the course of the season. It's all in the hands of the committee now to see if the Red maybe secure that wild card spot. Anything is possible. And we want to thank our sponsors once again, everyone who contributed to the Red over the course of this season, MDMI, Somerset Paving, Everyone's Joy Photography, of course, Spin Ultimate, Discraft, Breakmark, and Disc Store. And thank you all for tuning in with us for this Indianapolis Red campaign. We hope to see you at least once more this season, if not at the beginning of next year. Thank you to our producers. Thank you to our officials. Thank you to the fans at home. And for Kristen K.K. Kawek, I'm Charlie Lowe, and we will see you.